Yeah. All right, here we are. We are back. Are we set up in the in the back back? Yes, we are. We are. Okay. Brian's there. Okay, we probably going to be a quick evening tonight. We're going to sum up everything that we this uh, all of our meetings have led to today. We appreciate everybody showing up, all the familiar faces. That's for sure. Um, really appreciate your your folks' input and uh, everything you've contributed to this process. Um, if we may open up, please, if everyone could stand up, and I will ask uh, our new finance director, soon to be, to lead us in the pledge. Okay, so tonight, I mean, we can talk about a few things if anybody wants to um, go over uh, any new information they may have came into contact with, but we, the purpose of this evening is we're going to go over a recap of what we've talked about and then our next steps, and then the uh, potential items or bullet points in contact, uh, content of a letter that we plan on um, drafting and then getting our city council to ratify, and then we're going to... Um, reach out to the local municipal municipalities and see if they would like to um, also be a signatory on that. And then we're going to send it down to the appropriate folks down in Sacramento. Um, so moving forward, let's see here. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to try this real quick. Oh, yeah. I've always wanted to do that. I've always, I don't know how they do that. But okay. Um, okay. Now, as you all can see on that third column, fourth line down, Elaine, would you mind reading that, please? I can't see that. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, the, the unfunded liability update, we can get specific numbers if you all want that. But that basically, I think, Rick, you have a copy of that? Yeah. Last year's. Oh, it's last year's. Okay. Um, but, but, yes. Do you mind if I jump in? Because I can see it. From if you now. can, yeah. If you sure. summarize. Thank you very much, Rob. It shows the increase in our actuarial unfunded liability from one year to the next. And the most recent information was as of August of 2019. And it shows that our unfunded liability went up just under $8.9 million during that period of time. Is there anybody here from the Appeal Democrats? Uh, not that I see, no. Can watch it online? That they can watch and yeah, hopefully yeah. will watch it online. It would be nice if the public were aware of these statements because the article you had in the Appeal Democrat last week about the unfunded liability said our unfunded liability was $72 million. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Appeal Democrat should come up and say we were wrong. It just increased by $7 mil billion more, a million or whatever the number is. <laughs> Well, don't you know they lie all the time, man? No, but I mean, these are the yeah. things that the public, the public aren't aware of what's happening. Yeah, the unfunded liability is just over $79 million. So no more money going into unfunded liability, I hope. It changes every year based upon investment returns and actuarial assumptions and the lowering of the discount rate, that's still being phased in. We're down to a discount rate of 7% now, but they're phasing the impact in contributions in over a five-year period for each of the step-downs in the discount rate. Are you talking about the actual pensions or are you talking about the unfunded liability? The unfunded liability. So it goes down every year if something happens? No, it changes every year for a variety of different reasons. It, it can go up and it can go down. When did it go down last? It's been a while. Hey, could you give me 10 years or 15? I don't have that information in front of me, Mr. Trainer. But I can I tell you that the miscellaneous share did go down based upon their expectations. The city had not given raises at the level that they project. They have a projection built into their actuarial assumptions that we're gonna give so much in raises every year. We haven't done that. Our salaries had been fairly flat and they also, it, we've had people working longer than what they anticipated, and with the additional discretionary payment that was made, it actually did decline for the miscellaneous valuation. So it can go up or down. This is going to be my, my question of you is uh, if we did not if we did not do the ADP before, how much do you know how much more the uh, liability would be? Well, our additional discretionary payment was about 750000 uh, so it would have been that plus the interest charges on it. Okay, so we'd have been at $80 million ish Yes. Or better. 
Okay, if it had not been for that. Yes, Rick. I just have one question, Robin. So, according to the latest report from CalPERS, the ramp, the five-year ramp up and ramp down, that's been being discontinued, right? It is, yes. So, as of 2019, so the unfunded could go up somewhat because they're, they're no longer going to ease it. They're just going to, for the new un, for the new unfunded and the new, going forward. Yes. So they're not going to cushion the blow like they have. Before. They're not. Additionally, now they're, n they're going to amortize it over a shorter period. It's not going to be a 30-year amortization like it was. So, so they've changed their actuarial policies as right. well. So all things being equal, let's say they make their... 7% uh, target, it's still, the uh, fund is probably going to go up because of that change in rules. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure. All right. Anybody else comment on this slide? Is this working? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Brian. All right. So we'll go on to the next one here. This is the hypothetical. It was brought up before. Uh, don't pay anything. Just walk away. Well, this is what it's going to cost us if we did, which, of course, makes it not uh, the thing to do. If we had a discount rate of three and a quarter, $425,000, two and a half, um, excuse me, $425 million, uh, two and a half is $469 million check we would have to write in order to get out from under that. So clearly that's not an option. Next steps we've all came up with is... Uh, See, take, we, get, we are going to take the recommendations to the full council for approval, like I stated early on here. Prepare a letter to be sent to state leadership and um, FINRA, which included stabilizing the fund by reducing fees. Uh, state the, we should cover the investment fees. Split the losses incurred between investors and the constituents. If the state orders to divest for political reasons, we talked about that. So they have politicized the, their uh, strategy for their investments, and if they choose to do that, um, we want them to share some of the burden of the loss if, if the loss happens. The board has fiduciary responsibility to the members. The legislature needs to address how board appointments are made. We talked about that in detail. I think Elaine's familiar with that. Um, Provide independent oversight. I think, it, I think that's something Dave brought up, which is probably is a good idea. Broaden the investment opportunities based upon meeting the needs of the retirees and not politically motivated. I think we're really, we've all big on that. That's kind of the same underlying theme uh, repeated before. The state to cover losses if it controls the investments by political motivation. There, that, that same theme again. There's three, uh, three times mentioned in that, which does make sense. I, I agree with that personally. Assemble a unified group to address the issue with state leadership. And Robin, you want to address the uh, budgetary decision we made on holding off on making the ADP? Yes, please. As part of the budget process for the fiscal year 1920 year, we included an additional discretionary payment. That's what we call ADP to CalPERS for 500,000 for the general fund, and then a share for water, wastewater, and fleet, the other funds that have employee personnel, salaries and benefits in them. That said, um, at the time the budget was adopted by city council, I was asked to go ahead and include that in the budget as if we were going to make it, but to hold off and to wait until we could take it back to city council after these workshops had been held and after any recommendations or ideas came from the workshops themselves for city council to then decide whether or not to make that payment. So now would be the time to develop a recommendation to determine if that should move forward or not from this group to then take to the full city council for them to advise staff to either proceed and make the payment or do a budget adjustment and remove that from our budget. It's not money that can be used for anything else. Uh, it's coming out of the city's pension stabilization trust fund, which can only be used for pension costs. Unless we remove it from the budget. Yes. Okay. Ultimately, the pension trust fund has to be used for PERS costs in some manner. But what could happen is the following year, for example, the city could budget... Um, $500,000 or whatever amount the council deemed reasonable to come from the pension trust fund and not pay it out of the general fund. 
Gotcha. All right. Thank you. So this is uh, extra. This is what we talked about earlier to where we saved uh, technically about a million, about a million dollars. And the point behind it is to try to whittle away at the debt that we owe CalPERS so we're right. not paying the exorbitant interest costs. This last year, we showed at our last meeting um, that Councilman Shaw put together that we had paid $5.3 million in our unfunded liability payment for the year, but the interest on that debt was $5.1 million, if I remember the numbers correctly off the top of my head. So the amount that we paid towards the principal was about 200000 The rest was all interest. Wow. And the principal went Wow. Down. It did. I didn't and hear I what you said, Phil. Well, yes. On the 500000 you speak about that came out of the pension trust fund, fund. Uh -huh. where did that money come from? Reserves from the city's general fund. The bulk of it came from the former Economic Stabilization Reserve Fund. And when that was wound back once the recession ended, we put some back in the vehicle replacement fund because that's where it came from in the first place. And then the rest went into the pension stabilization trust fund with the, um, the reason behind that was basically that the employees had taken furloughs and we had vacancy savings due to vacant positions so that that money should somehow benefit the employees. How better to benefit the employees than to put it into the pension stabilization trust fund that ultimately would help fund their retirements because the funded status percentage was pretty low. Does PERS have a handle on that stabilization fund? They do not. That's why our pension trust fund is not in CalPERS hands. It's with a company called PARS. We opted um, way back when it was approved by former councils, uh, opted to put it with a company called PARS instead of PERS. So it's offline. I, got this very good deal. Yes. I want to know, would anybody in their right mind make a deal like that to pay that kind of interest in their personal life? 5.1 on a 5.3. What's the rate that we're paying? 7%. 7%. 7%. I mean, that is unbelievable. You can't do anything about it. It is, but you got to look at it in, in, in context, okay? Um, because it's 7%, but you can't look at it like a home loan that we're getting for three and a half, three and a quarter, or four. If you're out even today having a signature loan, because that's really something that's comparable, because there's no collateral backing this. So when you do that, you're going to be in that six, seven, eight, nine percent. Um, range, okay, and seven percent is, you know, within that range. So it's it's not beyond it. Is it prudent to take out that kind of loan? No, but this is what we've been handed by what's been done over all the years. So, you know, what Robin's done over the years, and it's been very prudent in her her thinking and and recommending to set up that trust fund, is keep the money in house. Manage it very conservatively because you go back to our investment uh, choices that we have, which aren't politically motivated. It's really about protecting the principal and trying to get a stable rate of return. It's not about making every dollar you can. It's about protecting the principal. So that that is there as these numbers go up. If um, just say next year our uh, PERS uh, pay payment is going to be $7 million but we only have $6 million in the budget to cover, we can actually draw from this trust a million dollars to pay our current and still not impact the services of the city. So that's why that's there and, you know, top job by not handing it over to PERS. Yeah. I, don't, I don't understand you. Can I, excuse me. You, we were talking about uh, one thing and then you led into something else. You were talking about it before $6 million that we owed PERS and we didn't have all the money, but we got a million somewhere else. Where's the somewhere else that you're speaking? Yeah, I didn't change gears on you, Phil. Okay. It's, it's hypothetical, okay. first uh, of all, and it was coming from this pension stabilization trust fund. But it doesn't have too much money in it, does it? Too uh, we have about 2.8 yeah. million, 2.9 yeah. million yeah. in it. Like I said, it was hypothetical. Okay. Okay. You know, we're talking yeah. about examples, and you kind of jumped back in because Mr. Burns had a different I question. I and uh, so, you know, the bottom line is these are all the things that we've gone over for the past six months, and it hasn't changed in six months. At the end of the day, we're stuck with a 7% rate of, of interest or, or uh, return charged to us by PERS. We have no control over the investments. What we're having to contribute every year continues to go up. 
we're basically only paying the interest payment on that without doing something additional. I, I fully understand mm -hmm. that. But what I'm saying is somebody that they signed you up for a suicide program, basically. Because this is a lifetime bondage situation that you got going. Another way to look at it maybe is if we were fully funded with PERS and we didn't owe them the unfunded liability of just under eighty million dollars they would, in their mind, be earning 7% on that because that's their target yield rate of return. And if they were earning 7%, they can't earn it because they don't have our money already. So they're going to charge us instead. And, and that's the key. Uh, Tom, they're charging. They say you don't need to be fully funded for this, but they, they're running the system based on being fully funded. If you have a plan worth $100 million and you're $20 million unfunded, they have to get the return on that twenty million, and that's why they charge you seven percent. I get it. The plan copacetic, and that's it's part of the contract we have with them, and they know where we live, so you're but, stuck. With it. But it is one of the biggest rip-off scene, uh, <laughs> scenes I've ever seen. I'll tell you that. And I just want to declare, you know, this is our last meeting. Uh, I don't want a, uh, another sales tax increase on me for the foolishness that took place down the road. So, you know, I, I got to make it my own way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't uh, go tax anybody. Yeah, and let me let me be really crystal clear on this, if I may, Mayor. Yes. Um, there is nothing that this council is even considering that is looking at a sales tax measure to fix this at all, okay? This is a problem that's been handed to us over the years. We are managing this well. We are looking at outside of the box ideas to do this. And there is no way that speaking as me, as one of your council members, would support any type of rev measure to cover this, period. Okay, so let's let's not try to convolute and get those. Together. It's a valid concern, but let's don't put them together because they're truly separate. I just want to give my few cents worth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I understand what's going on here. Right, and I just want you to understand from John Q. Public that we don't want to get taxed even more because we know this: that government always spends more than they have and is, beg is always coming back for more. So, okay. and I, I just would, wanted to put that out. I know it's a little off mm -hmm. uh, well, topic, so. In, in that, that realm, Tom, I, I'll, I'll wrap it up on this. That's been the mantra of how people perceive government, but I can tell you, I have no doubt that that is how things are not being done here. We have, this council has gotten very much involved with the budgetary process. Uh, Robin and I are very much been on the same page through that whole process and got to know each other well because we're seeing who can outthink each other the fastest because the numbers flow because that's what we do. Who's uh, I think it's kind of a draw right now. I, I, think, I think he's ahead. <laughs> but but what, I'm, what I'm trying to get to is this city is living within its means. This city has changed direction on certain things that we as a council felt that needed to change direction on, and we're looking at all things to address things. But we are not writing checks that we don't have the money for and looking to go raise something to write, you know, these checks. So I just want to be clear. We're doing everything we can. We can see, you know, some improvement. And we mm -hmm. can see that you got rid of some dead weight, you know, some do-nothing dead weight around here, too. So we're happy to see that. Is the sales tax uh, increase still on the table with the council? I don't think it was ever on the table. Uh, there was no, a study done last year. Council, no. Yeah, and let's keep, please, and let's keep this on PERS and let's not go down a different avenue tonight because we're not here to talk about anything else but this. If the, are these numbers correct? To get out, it's about $490 million, and annually we're spending 70 to $79 million. Is that What are we spending annual, um, annually currently with... Uh, like she said, about five and a half million. Five and a half million. Yeah, that's just for the UAL. We also have to pay the portion to CalPERS called the normal cost. So totals around eight million. Eight million. Okay. Okay. And projected to go up to eleven point five million over the next five years. Okay. Thank you. No, no, that's mm -hmm. I am not gonna pretend that I know anything. All right, so that's basically 
the, going to be the content of a letter we're going to draft to send recommendations and get other folks to hopefully um, be a signatory on that to give it a little bit more uh, teeth. Perhaps even go down to some state organizations like Leave of California Cities or um, we'll test that out as well. Um, do we have, do we find the magic bullet? Nope, we don't. It's just, it's a, it's a very dire situation. It's um, not anywhere we want to be, but it is our situation to be in along with several other, if not all cities and, and uh, folks in the state. But we are doing what we can, I think, very well um, to manage the, that debt and uh, shaving off as much as we can because it's, it's there whether we want it to be or not. Um, so what are the thoughts in general about uh, a, an additional payment so we can avoid paying interest on about? First of all, I would say again, you people have done a hell of a job. I think you've done, very, you've done much more than any other council that I've come to. Thank you, Phil. Supervisors meeting that I've got. Thank you. You've, you've stepped up and tried to do something. But the truth be known, Mayor Harris, you don't have a hope. There isn't any other city or county in the state that isn't in the same predicament. You can say all you want about all these wonderful things, but they don't mean anything. We have spent six meetings here now. We thought we might have something at the end of six meetings. I bet when we walk out of here tonight, we're no further ahead than when we first walked in. One of the things that I look at, and all I do is look at numbers, with your per Petra, is that the name? And That's correct, yes. That is a good system. You, at least you've pinned it down to the maximum amount of uh, payment that you have to make on each employee, is that correct? Yes. For safety, you've got a maximum of 24%. The employee pays 12, the city pays 12, is that right? The PEPA rates change or can change each year as well. And we've already seen small unfunded liabilities with PEPA employees. So just because we have PEPA employee tiers does not mean the unfunded liability situation goes away. It does not. Well, I'm not talking about the unfunded liability. I'm talking about the actual pension itself. Okay. This is the way that I read it. it. What I read was it said in the safety that the employee would pay 12%, the city would pay 12% into the pension. Is that right? I don't have it in front of me, but it sounds correct. Now, when I look at that, and it's just numbers, um, after the employee retires, after seven years, if he retires at the age of 50, at the age of 57, he has no more money in PERS. And he's got another, take away seven from 28, you got another 21 years to go? Gentlemen, you're whistling Dixie. You don't have that. Dave, <coughs> you specialize in this. Could mm -hmm. you sell any of your customers on a deal like this? I don't sell annuities. Oh, I'm I kidding. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> Phil, there's, there's many things, and trust me, I appreciate what you bring to the table, and we've had multiple conversations outside of this room back when I was campaigning and, and further. You do understand it quite well, but there's a few other variables that we have to factor in there, and, and I'm going to take it back to something very simple. If you go buy a house today and you get a mortgage for, I don't care, half a million dollars, have you made any headway on reducing that mortgage yet? No, it's still a half million dollars because you just took it. No, 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 okay. no, I would disagree with you. As soon as you make one payment, you have made a headway. Yeah, no, that, okay, you, you just proved, down, right? okay. Don't, don't give us stories that aren't real. Okay, okay. no, actually, Phil, yep. you just proved my point. That's exactly where I was going. Okay, good. As soon as you start reducing the principal, you're making headway. And that's what we're talking about here is with an additional discretionary payment, trying to reduce the principal because right now all we're paying is interest on this. And I would go back and use the same analogy and disagree with you with what we've done over the past six months. It may feel like right now we're in the same place because we are, because we haven't taken action yet upon the things we came up with. But I guarantee you the things that's up on that board I have not heard from anybody else about what to ask for. And one thing I learned a long time ago, early on in my career, is if you never ask, you never get. 
So we're going to take this stuff, we're going to get the approval of the council, and we're going to go ask. Simple things like the state covering the investment fees, <laughs> that could add another quarter percent to the return. So when the market has a down year, that could boost it by a quarter percent to where our, U, our unfunded liability isn't going up as much. Our payments aren't going up as much. If they are losing billions of dollars because they're divesting because of political reasons, then if they cover those, that also keeps the returns up. That reduces our unfunded liability. Those are what we're looking at. What can we do that is beyond our control to ask for to be able to make a difference? Because the pace that we're on, when we owe 80 million, roughly 70, a little over 79, we got a couple million dollars surplus in our trust fund. We can't pay it off. We don't have $464 million to write a check and get out. It is not prudent to go out and issue debt to pay this off to only basically get it twisted on us when PERS doesn't make the returns to where now we've got another second unfunded liability. So we've got to manage what we can in house. But these little things that you say aren't any better than they were six months ago, these are ideas that we haven't heard before. These are ideas that'll save a little quarter percent here, possibly a 1% there, and you put those together, that can significantly reduce that unfunded liability, significantly, because they ran scenarios. If our rate dropped to, Robin, I believe it was about 6%, that 79 million, and correct me if I'm wrong, went to about 132, 133 million, if I wasn't mistaken. Okay, so when you look at that, that's 1%. So if we can get some of these things um, agreed to or even make headway on them, you know, think of it going the other way. The 79 million could suddenly become 65 million. The 65 million could become 62 million. These are the things we're asking for that would truly help us. These are the things we're asking for that currently we don't control. And so that's why we've got to take this. And I will tell you now, as you said, all the other municipalities are in the same boat. You know, Marysville just issued their bonds to, do, uh, to pay it off to, to finance it. As soon as they have a bad year and they have another UAL, they're going to be the same boat we are again. Now they're paying a bond, and now they still got to make an unfunded liability payment. They got double that they have to pay. So if we can get the support... And it may come all out of Northern California because we know how the state gets kind of divided. But we're going to ask, we're going to pull it together, and if we can present that, you know, at least we're taking the lead and asking, and then the people at the state house can answer to the voters of California as to why they didn't take any action on it. That's what you have us here for, is to ask, is to try to come up with ideas. And that's all we can do. Did that answer you? No. Not, not one well, I know that. I, we, we will I, talk I, later, I, Phil. In my opinion, you have wasted 20 minutes of talking about nothing. Uh, forgive me. Now, I don't want to be okay. blunt, okay? Thank, I am blunt. Thank you, Phil. But Tom? The whole thing is that there isn't anything you're talking about. You're talking about the unfunded liability at the $487 million, right? Unfunded liability. There's another pension behind that that has to be paid, right? <coughs> no one talks about this. Tom, go ahead. So the way I'm, I look at it is, and I think this m m might be viable um, to put on the request, you know, the letter that you're sending, okay? And that is a, um, an effort, or the state needs to make an effort across the board to restructure the whole thing, okay? Because... Everybody knows that it is a mafia deal that's going on here. It is a it is a criminal extraction program to the highest degree. <coughs> that's the way I see it. And I don't think you're ever going to get to the bottom of it. So that, I would say, is a, a viable thing to put on the request that, that the whole state uh, deals with this as a unit to... Get it under control because it's out of control. Right. So, can we go back, Mr. Mayor, to the additional payment, possibly? You know, not the slide, but oh, yeah. get back on point because yeah. 
Um, that's really what we're looking for is what's the consensus of, do you want the council to consider making additional payment or what questions do you have about that? Because I can share thoughts on what you I take. a good case for Duke making the payment, uh, just like a house payment. Extra payments. What's that? And this relates to the extra payments. I think whether or not you want to make extra payments is related to how secure you feel in being more funded in PERS and what will happen if the stock market, which is its highest point, according to the news, the highest point, if they have a 24% reduction, now you've got 200 million in assets with PERS. If there's a 24% correction like in 08, you've just lost uh, $50 million. Now you're unfunded, it's not 80, it's 130 million and the game's over, so that's something. If you want, if, you know, the more you're funded at this point, when the market tanks and nobody knows when, but it looks like it's imminent, then the more you have in it, this just means the more you're gonna lose, and that's a fact. You might be better to hold on to your money, in other words. Right. That's... Yes, Elaine, thank you. I have a question. Oh, okay, okay. Elaine. Our funded liability payments that we have here for, for Ube City, at what point would we get it to the 50% point to where we pay more into principal than we are into interest? Mm -hmm. At what time frame? You know, when I make a loan on a house or a car, I always pay it enough where 50, I, I'm putting more into my principal than my interest. Robin, you understand that uh, I, I question? Camp. more in principal than you're paying in interest, but I know right now we're paying so much in interest and so little towards principal that if we can put more at the principal, and I say if we can because, yes, our budget is very, very tight, it's difficult to do that, but you've got to do something because otherwise you're paying basically almost interest only, and that's very frightening. Um, as far as addressing the concern of a market drop, that's a huge concern for me. That's why I would not advocate issuing pension obligation bonds. But you can't time the market. That's something I've learned uh, and heard my entire adult life. So when you have, I'm going to say, two and a half million in a pension stabilization trust, if you layer in 500,000 a year over a five year period, you're whittling down that debt that you're paying interest on over time. And it should, the law of averages, the market should work out more to your favor than if you were to send it in all at once. So you're thinking this would be a five-year program? <coughs> Potentially. It's difficult to say I can't predict, predict future budgets um, or what future councils might do. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't recommend giving it all to PERS all at once. Here's our entire pension stabilization trust. So it's, it's a reasonable approach. And I always look at things from the perspective of a five-year. What can we sustain over a five-year period? I'm big on five-year sustainability for the city's budget. Elaine, you've had your hand up for a while. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Thank you. That was the answer I was looking for. I really want to go back to this. We need to move forward. But that seems like an awfully big list to write a letter. And who do you call state leadership? Who are you defining as state leadership? Mm -hmm. So we're we're going to figure that out based on her recommendation, or we're, we're going to ascertain that as soon as we get this letter written uh, to find the most appropriate person to vet that through, even if it's our legislators or. Whomever. They may even be able to be someone who can sponsor a bill or something change for us. Um, those are details we have to work out, but they will be sent down there. That may very well be, but when you look at some of this, broaden the investment opportunities. I really think you need to get the people out here supporting that, even if it happens to be a bill that's put on the election next November. And Elaine, you're. you're you're about step, uh, you know, I or J, you're, you're on down here because all of that will factor in. Um, has anyone ever been a part of a coalition seeking legislative change, grassroots effort? That's the way this is going to have to take flight. We start, we start here. Right here. And 
we develop everything. Once we get that approval from the full council and we're able to move forward, then you know, we will start drafting the letters, get everything done. We will start looking for that joint support around us, and we will start bringing in our state legislators to have them to see how they feel about this and see if we can garner their support. And then we just continue walking this thing through. You're talking the League of California Cities. We could be talking the... Um, uh, the Association of City Managers, I forget what that's called, but Mr. Rock has referred to that's an association. The Financial Directors Association for all of the ones. You start building that coalition together so that when we walk in, it's like, look, Mr. Legislator, we have all of this. Governor, we have all of this. This makes sense. And we start that. And then you have to get out to the grassroots. That's where you get the people involved. That's where you have to take all those steps before you can ever get to a ballot initiative or a bill in the in the legislature. But that's where it's, we're hoping it heads. This tonight is really just the beginning. So well, that's an awfully long list to go in one letter. And, and if, I think that some of it should go to possibly different authorities. Well, some of it will be probably consolidated, mm -hmm. um, Elaine, but um, I agree that we want it to be, uh, you know, a few bullet points as possible. We, we have to contain all the information we've came up with, and we have came up with quite a bit. But everything you've said and your concerns, it's in the plan. It's just not happening yet. You're kind of jumping way out there. Because uh, we're going to make it a lot bigger than our, this room with 20 people in it, if you know, before we ac actually crack the seal and, and make a statement publicly. I think so. the last item you have there should be a little higher up on the scale too. The what? The state to cover losses if it, if it controls the investment by political correctness. Yeah. yeah. Well, we think I don't. I don't think this should yeah. be number eight on the list of agenda. Programs. This is just a PowerPoint slide, man. Okay. We're gonna we'll 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 strategize it. It's no problem. It'll be on there though. Had no retirement, and we realized that. And we started investing what I had to take out of my check for my state retirement. And you know what? He gets as big a check every month as I do now. Jimerson's is really good. <laughs> Rick's a friend of mine. So. Yeah. All right. Can I uh, say uh, or clarify what Robin said? That fund or that money, that principal money that's being set into a, a side account, that's still in, in, in the control of the city mm -hmm. and not in, under, PERS can't get their hands on it. Yeah, yeah I think that's a, a wise move. I do too. Yeah, and we want to do a, make a little bit on there to buy down some principal, but you you may remember she said we have over two million in there. We're only going to give them about eight hundred thousand to kind of eat away at the principal a little bit, mm -hmm. make an extra house payment if you will, yeah. and then we'll go from there. That's but we're not going to let them have it a whole thing. Yeah, me too. I think all of so us have it at one time or another. Yeah. You know. So I would suggest that perhaps you might get in touch with Mendocino County mm -hmm. yeah. because they have the they have a lot of the. They haven't done any. They haven't been able to. They haven't solved anything. But they've got people on, on that board that are just unbelievably good on pensions. The problem with the pension issue is that nobody looked at it for years, yeah. and there's darn few people understand it, and nobody takes a look at numbers. If they would look at numbers, we wouldn't be in this problem. The All right. The well, there we go. Payout, between a 7% at PERS and a 6.1% at PERS, two years. Yeah. All right. There isn't a pension, there isn't a pension that is out today that can be paid out on a reason. You'd have to send in 100% of, of the wages in order to pay it out. So All right, well, that's the, going to be the content of, of our letter. We will modify it. We will consolidate a few things and strategize on the wording and then uh, get approval of the full council, move it forward to other folks, and see if we can, uh, uh, I like the word coalition, uh, to, to uh, wrap their ideas around this, then we're going to go move forward. Yes, ma'am. Question. When yes. When you to the council, does it have to be a four to five vote or a three to five? Three to five. Good. Just like pretty much everything. I don't know. I don't know if anything's required four to five. Sometimes yeah. they do, but when? Uh, tell me later. I, I don't know. I'm thinking. Tell me later. I'm thinking of all right. Well, thank you all. What? Vitamins are four to five. Vitamins are four to five. <laughs>
<laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate, we all really appreciate your time. Staff as well. You guys, are, you're here late tonight. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, we'll consider this adjourned. This might be the last scheduled meeting, but it doesn't have to be the last time we talk. You have our numbers. We're, we're always willing and, and to help and to hear from you. So thank you very much. I have a suggestion on that. To have a follow-up in six months. What? Have yeah. a follow-up meeting in six months. I would say three. Actually, it's, I don't think, the follow-up meetings on this is going to be with the full council mm -hmm. because, you know, the mayor and I has, has talked and did, this is sketchy timelines at this right now, but if we can draw things together and pull this together, I'm thinking sometime in February, possibly having it before the full council to walk them through a mini presentation of this, of what we've done in six months to make sure they're ready to give us the endorsement to go forward. Then you go from there, we've got to have a month maybe six weeks or so to start preparing the documents. Then you ratify that with the council. Then you start going out. So it's not going to be, we're going to be meeting separately. I would encourage you all to come to the council meetings because that's where it's going to go forward now because we've been conducting this as a subcommittee, but this council is what acts on behalf of the city. So it's going to be at the council meetings. You're but. Oh, God, no, I hope not. No more of those. Tuesday was a marathon. So, okay. Well, all right. Thank you all very much.